Hello, I'm Ross. Welcome back to another episode of Britain's Hidden History. And here we are, climbed all the way up, and it is way up, way up, way up to the impressive and magnificent site Tumbalum, Grave Mound of Barham. So it's not too long a climb, pretty steep if you come the right way. <laughs> now, of course, the first question any visitor is going to ask, why is it called Tum Barlam? Tum refers to a burial mound. Who was Barlam? Was he? Any information available? Hello? Your little sign here? <laughs> Always amusing. See the official uh, verdict on the grave of Barlam? Barham. <laughs> Some Barham ancient monument. This mound, a Norman Motton Bailey castle, was built in the 12th, 13th century to control the ridgeway and surrounding the area. It stands on the eastern flank of a rock cut ditch, enclosing about 12 acres. Thought to be an Iron Age hill fort. Well, really? You think? We've made perhaps of medieval construction. Conservation work to protect the mound and improve public access was undertaken in 1984 by a Mount Power Services Commission team under the direction of the County Planning Officer, Gwent County Council. Financial assistance also given by the Welsh Office, the Islam Borough Council, the cooperation of the landowners, the trustees of the Slan Arthur Estate, and the money of the mine amalgamated Commoners Association is greatly acknowledged. Well, the crack crack all get acknowledged. <laughs> Poor old King Baron didn't get a mention. What can we do, eh? It's the thing you see, I mean, uh, maybe it was a Norman Motton Bailey castle on here. I mean, it'd be, it's a bit strange because they haven't left any trace. I don't think there's any visible remains at all. And I tell you what, the archaeologists and historians would leap all over it if they could find even a post hole or a shard of pottery remotely Norman. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing. But anyway, even if there was, and this was somehow decided to be, uh, there was a Norman castle there, well, 12, 1300. So what do they think happened before then, then? Nothing at all? I <laughs> mean, it's ridiculous. They found the uh, example of an Iron Age settlement, which presumably be at least well over a thousand years earlier. And you think the local people went, oh, look at those clever Normans there, never thought of putting a castle on the highest point in the area that commands the causeway. Never thought of having anything there. And this. Ah, very frustrating. There we go. Let's find out more about Tumbalum. Right, now there's the view back down the walk if you come from the Forestry Commission. There's a mountain scenic drive, very good, it's long old climb. That's the Severn crossing over to England. So as you can see, it's still a very strategic spot, it's crucial. And this is where uh, my friend, the Druid of Cumbran, Richard, he always calls this that uh, Balam was buried up here so you can keep an eye over, over Caerleon at the so-called Roman parts and see what they're up to. <laughs> As we said, this is the strategic spot. Look at those views right across there. You can see that's the Seven Estuary. Now you notice on here, uh, Barham is the 36th uh, King of Britain. He followed his Ap Kerry, which doesn't necessarily mean son, it means successor to, he's probably his nephew. Now this is a scheduled ancient monument. Be very careful, you can't go digging or messing about or do any problem. We'd like to get proper archaeologists to have a go, but that's very reluctant. But we do have the powerful tool of dousing, which I've already shown on some videos uh, can do an awful lot more than you realize. So, as well as looking for water, you can also try and work out uh, other things about it. <laughs> and it's uh, um, I filmed this quite a way before I really got into dousing myself and I just filmed it as a reporter and I can tell you from first experience now that it, it seems to work every time and different people get the same results the so we're finding something <laughs> That's the ley line. So now in this case it's all about ley lines, I'm trying to work out where they are It's open yeah. now this, this king was buried with his dog Yeah, it's buried with a dog, I mean uh, Oh, it'd be so good to do a proper excavation and then find out. Because I mean, we've grabbed to lots of sites and everything checks out so far. Phenomenally special talent for this. It's quite remarkable. Yeah, looking for 
Dragon Lines. Curiously, no Dragon Line up your Dragon's Breath, some people call it. By well, the Ley Line straight through the middle, if you can quite catch that. I've got so much more about Grey, I'll have to show you one day, because he's got phenomenal powers. How's he trying now? Ain't nothing. That's nope. it. That's it. Cross is on the spot. <laughs> I know you might be skeptical, and no one's forcing you to believe it. They're really powerful. <laughs> Try it yourself. It does seem to be the case of most of these, doesn't it? They pick the cross junk, cross points. Yeah. Usually, though, we we usually have water, don't we? Good point. Good point. Usually, there's water nearby. The yes. Port. Unless there's some underground. Yes. And always ask the. Uh... That's worth looking for. That's an excellent point, yeah. Just thinking about how I was thinking of asking you coming up. Yeah, there's water down here. <laughs> Julian gives it a go, and you love that stark look when someone first tries dousing and sees it working, because it really is shocking. Look at his face. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the idea, the ball ties in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing, full marks there. Ah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Britain's Hidden History Group has so much more going on on our YouTube channel. The one you're watching now, there's a live stream, 8 o'clock UK time every Sunday. We speak to people like Wilson and Blackett, reprint their old books and help produce new ones. We go researching to the tops of mountains all the way down to the bottoms of caves. Busily recording the books, you can listen to them as well and looking at mysteries and working out what we're not being taught in schools and preserving it because the physical and written evidence is rapidly disappearing. You can also find out how to read ancient writing and hieroglyphs using the Welsh language. It's amazing. It's a Facebook group where this is being discussed. Along with the website, you can buy the books and help us. Also, as you can see, there's now a Patreon page where just a few pounds a month will make all the difference in trying to keep the project going and preserve this history for future generations and also to find out for ourselves what is going on, what is Britain's hidden history. So until the next time, Heather!